Today on the Pipeline Vlog, we're talking about lettering. No, 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 wait, stay, stay, please stay. Just listen to me, hear me out, please, please, thank you. One of my biggest bugaboos about the world of comics, and this is something that even letterers themselves uh, propagate, and I'm sure it's some sort of mechanism of self-denial about their importance to the craft of comics, is that a good comics letter is the one that you don't notice. And to me, that's completely backwards. I always notice the good letterers. I know I'm probably in a minority here, but yes, the bad letterers you're going to notice either way. Whether you nor normally notice letterers or not, the bad letterers will stand out for being absolutely awful. But the good letterers to me do stand out. When I see John Workman lettering a title, I see it a mile away, and I love it, and I, I, I'm more inclined to read that comic. When I see someone who's doing something different with the style, I'm curious to read how it works within the confines of that particular comic book. To me, lettering is maybe not just as important as the art, but it's a fairly important function of comic books because, let's face it, you're probably looking at the lettering more than you're looking at the art. Even if you're a slow reader who likes to take in all the details of a given comic book page, if you like to look at all the perfectly feathered lines that the inker put on the page, if you like to look at the textures in the background that the colorist added in, and if you are doing that, then you're a special breed also, like I am with lettering, and I do both to tell you the truth, you are going to spend probably most of your time on a given page reading what people are saying, reading what's in the caption boxes, reading dialogue balloons and scrolls full of lettering or whatever may happen to be there in that particular comic. So to me, the letterer is super important because you're going to see the lettering, you're going to notice the lettering because you are looking at the lettering more than anything else in a comic book. So when you say that the lettering is best when you don't notice it, are you reading a silent comic book? Because, to me, you should be noticing it when you read it. But then again, I'm the kind of freak who, you know, sees Times New Roman and notices what font that is when he's reading a, a newspaper or something. So, I will grant you that perhaps this is me and my particular thing, but I still think we shouldn't cut letterers short and think of them as being, you know, the invisible heroes of the comic books. Yes, they are invisible heroes because people don't take them seriously enough for the work they do, especially in the modern age when a lot of times they're doing all the post-production stuff and they're, they're merging files together and doing all the digital stuff that, that people don't want to think about or don't even know about, perhaps. But they're the ones who have to get all those layers together in Illustrator and put a book to bed. But letterers, I think, and their lettering the letter forms, the font, the balloon choices, the placement of the balloons, the way they butt up against the panels, the borders of the panels, or the way they, they fly freely like balloons. All of those things are conscious decisions a letterer makes that adds up to what the overall aesthetic of the comic book is. And to say you don't notice it, so it must be good, to me is kind of backwards. I think you should notice it, and I think you do notice it, even if you don't realize that you are noticing it. So that's my pipeline rant today about comic book letterers. Give them some credit. They do good work. They are indeed the unsung and invisible heroes, but not for the reasons you may be thinking. I think you should notice them, and I know I do, and I thank them for all their work. This video was recorded on Monday afternoon, just minutes before the eclipse.